Sometimes we see apocalyptic scenes. Thousands of dead fish washed up on the beach. Birds, seals. Species are spotted in places where they never used to be seen. Whales in the Balearic Islands. Tuna off the coast of Alaska. Tropical plankton on coastlines where there are no coconuts. What happened to them? Today, in Planet Tuna, we offer one possible explanation. A natural phenomenon which has increased in intensity and frequency over recent decades as a result of climate change. Marine heat waves. A marine heat wave is an extreme climate event in which water temperature rises a lot in a particular region of the sea. How much is a lot? Scientists say 3 or 4 degrees centigrade above the average. What? How long do they last? According to the definition, 5 days is enough. What? Is that all? 3 or 4 degrees for 5 days? And that causes an underwater apocalypse? Is that what vaporizes SpongeBob SquarePants? It might not sound like such a big deal. For the human body, used to being surrounded by air, which varies its temperature by 10, 15 degrees in a single day, 3 degrees is nothing. An Inuit moves to Jamaica and, well, he'll be fine. But ask any tuna about it. 3 more degrees, I'm off to Alaska. It takes a lot to change the temperature of the sea. Metal, for example, changes temperature fairly easily, but water doesn't. Chemists call this specific heat capacity, which is defined as the amount of energy required to raise the temperature by one degree. Most marine organisms lack the mechanisms to regulate their own temperature that we warm-blooded critters have. It's as if you're just chilling at home and all of a sudden you're dropped in the middle of the great Australian desert at midday in a fleece jacket. Sounds bad, doesn't it? We're not gonna lie. Temperature change stresses the ecosystem. Let's talk about corals. They're really weird. Let's see what you think. Their interior cells contain microscopic algae, aka a symbiont, which provides it food by photosynthesis and other stuff. If the temperature rises, the algae get stressed and start to produce toxins, and the coral expels them. Out! But those algae were giving the coral its color. So the coral turns like pale, you know, translucent, washed out, whitish, all but bleached. It turns bleached. That's why this process is called coral bleaching. But the bad thing is not the bleaching, is that those algae were food providers. What kills corals is starvation, not whitening. A better name would have been coral starvation. Another effect is that during these events, marine species flee the unusual heat and move to more comfortable waters, entering areas where they had never been before. It's like finding Nemo, but with a whole bunch of fish. This is called tropicalization. Now this term is spot on. Bleaching, not so much. Moreover, Seabirds can't find the fish they usually eat because the fish have moved, gone tropical. What can seabirds do? Fry themselves an egg? No. They die. You know how mosquitoes like a bit of heat to reproduce? Well, some algae also thrive when the temperature rises. Unfortunately, many of these algae are harmful to a lot of sea creatures. Krill love these algae, and as there is plenty, they have a feast. So, we have krill that's nice and fat, but poisonous if you eat it. And everyone eats krill. Absolutely everyone. Penguins, seals, squid, whales, fish, seabirds, you name it. And the ones that don't eat krill themselves eat other creatures that do eat krill. The result? Mild gastroenteritis. And death. Mammals and seabirds washed up on the beach. Don't draw that, please, hands. No more drawing, please, hands. It's very sad because the oysters get ill, and so do the lobsters and the crabs, and the kelp forests go bare. Hang on. Okay, hands, here's something good to draw. A heat wave helped the recovery of Atlantic bluefin tuna. This is Planet Tuna. Draw a tuna! 
There is evidence that in 2003, in the Mediterranean where the tuna reproduce, a marine heat wave that has since become famous led to extraordinary survival rates of recently hatched Atlantic bluefin tuna. A real baby tuna boom right when there were fewer tuna than ever. The Mediterranean heat wave began on June 14th, 2003, right at the start of spawning season for tuna, and lasted for 31 days, far more than the five-day minimum. The larvae that hatched in June grew more quickly because the water was hotter. This reduced the time they were exposed to predators. Their larger size enabled them to swim away more quickly. Baby tunas hatched in July did not enjoy the same good fortune. They found the water was too hot, 28 degrees, given the amount of food available. Their metabolisms sped up due to the heat, and if there had been enough food, then everything would have been the same as it was in June. But there was not enough food to satisfy such high energy requirements. As a result, fewer of them survived. In summary, the tuna that hatched in June did very well, while those that hatched in July only did so-so. Many more larvae survived that year, and as a result, there were more adults in subsequent years. Hooray! Tuna are not the only ones who got lucky during these marine heat waves. Some species of squid also found them advantageous. Orcas also reproduced more because they had more salmon to eat, because salmon had migrated due to the heat wave. So, for salmon, it was bad. But for killer waves, it was good. That's life. That's biology. The reality is that marine heat waves have become more frequent and more extreme, like electric scooter accidents, and they last longer. Scientists are trying their best to better understand this phenomenon and suggest actions to businesses and administrations to lessen their effects. Although we've seen some disasters in this video, that doesn't mean the world is coming to an end. We can take action and recover. For the moment, it's time to reduce carbon emissions. Go tell that to your local politician. And that negationist, you know? Go tell them too. And may the penguins never have to go tropical.